This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so uh, in the last class we discussed uh, uh, about one requirement, right? So to gather the uh, you know few information from the server. So at that time, uh, you know, we we got the result, but uh, the result, uh, you know, some result in uh, we got the data type instead of the value. So uh, you know, uh, we could not able to uh, troubleshoot at that time uh, since it's already uh, you know 6:40 around. Okay. So uh, after that, I checked the code. Uh, so the thing is, uh, f uh, you know, some fields, uh, some values like disk name, total size, right? So it contains uh, multiple values. C drive, D drive. Uh, you know, it's coming with uh, two two uh, values, right? So it's a multiple values uh, is combined. So uh for in order to uh, you know get all those details so either what we can do instead of uh, uh, getting the same uh, values so we can use join uh, to combine both uh, values together so even if it is more then it will combine with uh, you know no, comma so i i used to add uh, join uh, space um, you know within the codes uh, i mean comma so whatever the values which is having as a memory info dot name so it will be added along with the uh, you know comma i have added a join for uh, memory space and uh, free space percentage and also uh, in my system i uh, you know i could found two uh, antivirus name so that's why uh, you know i added join for the antivirus name and also installation date so if i run this one uh, with the same so I haven't changed anything. So I just added the join. Uh, Napoleon, can you please explain what was uh, changed? Uh, is it uh, uh, all the lines got changed or how it will be? Yeah, okay. So, whatever if you see uh, the join, so I have added join actually. Uh, whatever, okay. So, let me explain thing. So, let me, let me remove this join first. Previously, it will be like this. So we got the memory, uh, you know, memory information from logical disk. Sorry, uh, it's not a memory info. It's a memory is it? Logical disk. Okay, so we got the uh, disk memory information from this class and stored in the variable called uh, memory info, right? So here we just got the drive name. C drive, D drive, E drive, F drive, right? So we got the, we are getting the driver name, and also using uh, custom property, we are getting the uh, total size memory in GB. So uh, by default it will be in uh, bytes. So we are just converting into GB, and uh, free percentage. Uh, we don't have free, uh, you know, free percentage uh, with the property. We we are just calculating. Uh, we have only free space uh, information so from the free space we are just uh, calculating and divide by size into 100 so i need only two digit after the floating point uh, after the decimal point so that's why i used a math of around and uh, only two digit i have mentioned so when i'm running this one so i will get the information like this
Hello, can I hear me? Yes, uh, Napoleon, you are audible. Okay, okay. Sorry. There is some issue. Uh, okay, so now it's getting. So it says you turn and we check the file. So if you see, uh, we got the data for the individual values. So when it comes to disk name, so we got the data type. So this is object of array data type. So uh, since this contains uh, you know, multiple value, so if we see uh, the result, let me run this one alone. Uh, okay, let me run this one on the uh, command prompt. So the data is coming up uh, when executing on the uh, screen, but when it comes to exporting in the data into uh, a CSV file, so we are getting only the data type since it contains, uh, you know, kind of uh, <coughs> uh, you know. Uh, format so it, it could not be able to uh, uh, put it as yes, single items so that's why what we have to do so we have to combine the data with the help of uh, comma so we can combine using uh, you know join we have a join option so if you use uh, you know you know after the uh, you know variable if you use iPhone you can able to find uh, logical data type so and also join so join will be useful when combine uh, you know, multiple data i used to join uh, in order to uh, add comma uh, instead of uh, you know, multiple values so here uh, i'm just going to execute as a command so that's why i used uh, um, you know confined dollar with the variable so if you are not using this one, uh, it will be it, it will work sometime, but uh, it is recommended to use a dollar when executing a you know a, a property. So if you if I run this one, I will get the result oh, like this. You mean to say that if I use the hyphen join uh, in a common parameter, then uh, common value, then that will be yeah. uh, removed from the bracket. Is that right? Curly bracket. Yes, correct. Curly bracket will be removed and it will be considered as, as your one data and it will be exported into CSV. Okay. Okay. So yep. let me let, yeah, let me run this again. So now we can able to find uh, all the data here.
but napoleon um i wanted to share my screen uh, for a moment uh okay. can you please allow me okay yeah sure i think uh, i'm not i'm not uh, allowed to share the screen so you know okay. let me let me make you as a presenter are you able to see me yes can you so so i <clears throat> i can see the output is visible so this is the output actually i i i don't find any um, curly bracket over here on in output actually all the outputs are a singular one but when i am exporting yeah. into a um, csv file i mean a okay. text file everything is fine okay text file everything is fine but mm. text file i can see okay It's okay. So AV name contains multiple values. Yeah, so... multiple values. I agree. Hmm. But uh, for other values, I don't uh, don't have curly bracket. Right? That should have correct, been correct. Uh, displayed correctly, right? But correct. the problem here is that that is not nothing was uh, properly given here. Actually. Can I try right now? Can you can you show the code uh, with the export CSV? Okay, so line number twenty-four, right? Yeah, line number twenty-four. So line number twenty-four, you are uh, using server info instead of uh, server details. So server details contains all the data, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, so here what you are trying to so you you created a hash table and used in server info and uh, okay so have you updated server details? Can you scroll up a little bit? Okay, so you just got the server IP and data and you used a hash table. Okay. Okay, so it's in. Uh, okay, okay. So when you are exporting into CSV, what you are getting? I'm getting some <clears throat> unord, uneven words actually. Yeah, since it's a column, I mean, it's a you know list-wise data uh, when you are using a hash table. This is this is a note file, uh, not CSV, right? Yeah, I agree. But even if you open, uh, I don't have uh, Excel in my Excel installed okay, on my okay. laptop actually. Uh -huh. okay. But even if you open the CSV file, that should uh, give the. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, you you should be able to understand the terms, right? But it's something different actually. Okay. So uh, can I can use uh, PS custom object? So. Yeah. Uh, since it's in hash table, uh, yeah. Instead of ordered, uh, just to use uh, PS custom object. Yeah. Yeah. You can remove ordered also. It's not a problem. Okay. No problem. So you got the result? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Actually, actually, what what we are doing actually by providing a custom. Okay. Option, so my uh, question is very simple, Napoleon. Actually, uh, when I am uh, exporting into text file, it is uh, uh, exporting properly. Okay. So but I am trying only. 
Uh-huh. Okay, so what whatever you are uh, seeing on the command prompt on the screen, you can get it on the uh, Notepad or test file. So it will work perfectly okay. fine. So even uh, in the uh, command prompt, so you are getting dotted uh, data, it will be updated as it is in the Notepad file. Uh, I mean test file. Okay. okay, but when it comes to CSV, Excel, and all, it's a different format. So uh, it's supposed to be, um, you know, column wise, uh, separated by commas actually. So if you are seeing the result uh, using hash table, is here uh, list wise data. Uh, so you have to convert into PowerShell, uh, you know, column wise data. So okay. it will be matched with the CSV format. column wise and uh, data actually okay you mean to say that when we are using uh, when we are using the data uh, to convert into csv format then we need to use ps custom object use uh, ps custom object yeah that is only specifically used for uh, csv file output allowed is is not is only for csv uh, even uh, for the test file if you want to uh, print the details in the uh, you know uh, header wise i mean uh, column wise data you can make use of ps custom tip object you just think okay. about so what are the you given right server name server one uh, ip address yeah. uh, something so so if you have multiple server name so then uh, it will be a uh, you know big thing right so if just compare uh, if it is in excel then it, so we have server name is a column so under the server name you will get all the the server name so we have ip address is a column so under the column we will get all the information so uh, but if you are using uh, this kind of thing so hash table then each time we, we have to look uh, one by one uh, server name one and then we have to check server name two we have to scroll down a lot right okay you got my point yeah i got it yeah so if it is a excel thing uh, you know uh, header and then values uh, you know on each row so it will be easy to identify right okay got it yeah that's the point yeah thank you okay now i want you to be uh, a sales set up organizing okay you are already having right so okay share my screen again okay so uh, any question with this uh, exercise yeah i'm okay with that can i please share this code uh, uh, once you complete sure it. i will share yeah, yeah sure, sure sure i will share it as uh, ragopani you have any questions uh no okay so uh last week we discussed about uh, uh middle can models can you pass me the script uh, okay last anything uh, no no pelen uh, sada govan wants the script actually Hey, I will share it after the uh, you know session. Yeah. Okay. So uh, last week we discussed about modules. So uh, it's a continuation of the modules topic. Uh, today we will uh, you know learn about uh, one more module. Uh, you know, so Power CLI. <coughs> okay. Okay. So. uh okay so just a first thing uh, so what modules comes to picture in order to uh, in, interact with uh, or integrate with some uh, you know applications uh, so for example if you want to uh, in, uh, you know integrate with uh, ad uh, to perform some automation so if you want to integrate powershell into uh, uh, you know scam sccm uh, you know power, power, v center using power cli and also uh, you know ms sql database so so lot of things right so uh, even comot also having some powershell module uh, so netapp uh, when it comes to storage devices called netapp cisco so most of the devices having powershell module 
so uh, if you want to perform something related with these uh, you know uh, module uh, tools then uh, you can find it for which module we supposed to install so uh, for checking the module you can directly go and check it on the power powershell gallery and uh, even uh, some of the providers like uh, netapp uh, if you check with the netapp and they will provide the module uh, so if you have access to the netapp uh, portal uh, they will uh, already have the powershell module and all on that uh, portal so you just go and uh, check the downloads and you can able to find the powershell module so likewise uh, you know uh, you can find the modules on the installation servers so for example uh, if you are going to uh, you know work on the scam you just go on the scam servers uh, you know scam management server right? so you just go on the server and find the uh, exact module path you can able to get the uh, customizing module just copy and paste it in your local and uh, you can use uh, for your script Okay, so PowerShell is uh, nothing but is, this is the model which we supposed to use to integrate with the uh, vCenter uh, EXX host and all. So when it comes to VM admin and all, they supposed to do a lot of things uh, on the vCenter side, uh, right? So EXX host, vCenter, uh, so they will uh, do uh, the manual uh, operations. So whatever they are doing manually, we can control and automate uh, using PowerShell. So, uh, PowerShell is, uh, you know, we have separate uh, uh, command prompt also. So, anyone uh, having idea? So, have you uh, see that, uh, you know, the PowerShell before? So, it will be no, in uh, grid. Yeah. So, if you log in into vCenter server, uh, so you can able to find the PowerShell like command prompt. So, it will be uh, green color and, uh, you know, green color actually so this is blue right so that one is a green color thing but uh, mostly same you can execute the powershell command also uh, so the thing is uh, uh, on the vcenter server the power cla model is already installed so that's the only thing so uh, if you are working on if you are going to work on the uh, vcenter automation thing um, then uh, no need to worry just to copy the power CLA play uh, module from that uh, vcenter server or else you just download from the powershell galaxy so if you have uh, uh, internet on your development server so you can just use install module followed by the model name vmr.powershell okay so let me check okay let me check Just a minute, let me check. Uh, I have one environment, check if it is available. So just a minute, I am trying to log in.
Just a minute. There is some issues going on. Okay, <clears throat> sorry, could not be able to connect that V center. Uh, probably. Okay, just I will explain. Let me check uh, next week uh, if I can able to. <laughs> okay, so uh, can you able to see my screen? Yes, no problem. Yes, we can. Okay. So uh, we have to check whether the PowerShell is already available. So uh, you can be able to find from uh, show command or not. So if you could not able to find, you have to install the PowerShell. So basically, you can download from uh, PowerShell gallery. And second option, you can get it from vCenter server. So you just copy and paste it on the on your local machine. So once you are installed, uh, you can be able to get uh, from yeah, so if you see uh, active directory installed on this machine and uh, there are a lot of uh, VM related uh, you know modules so this is one of the PowerShell is already already installed on this one actually uh, so this is on the server <clears throat> but uh, on that server I could not able to connect the uh, vCenter so there is some uh, um, issues going on Okay, so in order to connect the uh, yeah, you know vCenter or uh, ASS host, you can use the command called connect iPhone VA server. So connect iPhone VA, VA server followed by server. server. Uh, you can provide the QDN or IP address uh, in order to connect the vCenter or uh, ASS. So once you connect that, you can able to perform the uh, uh, task, um, you know, using the available PowerShell commandlets. So there are a lot of commandlets available um, in the on the PowerShell module. So you can make use of that uh, commandlet for your requirement. So we need to provide the credential. So in order to, uh, uh, you know, uh, log in to the VR, I mean, um, center access, you need to give the credential side. So you have to pass the credential. So once you are uh, successfully able to connect, uh, then you will connect the uh, information is connected successfully. So after that, uh, you know, this is the initial one um, uh, for the integration. So you have to connect that uh, corresponding vCenter. <coughs> so in your system, um, you know, in the environment of the project, you might have multiple vCenters. So which vCenter you're supposed to connect, you have to mention. So if you want to connect, uh, you know, all the vCenters, we have to do, uh, uh, you can use, you know, multiple values. So the mostly frequently used, uh, you know, common lets are get VM. So if you are using get VM, you can able to get the list of VMs from that vCenter. 
so it will provide all the vm uh, from the center so if you want a particular vm so you just you can use uh, iphone name uh, followed by the uh, you know the vm name so uh, you know whatever the parameter which we supposed to pass so you can pass still uh, so whatever we learned uh, on the select object where object so conditional so everything you can apply here also so just at the command lights going to be changed for the, the command so other remains running and all it's same so each uh, command light having its own parameters so we can pass the corresponding parameters for the requirement so get vm to get the list of vms and uh, remove vm to remove particular vm so you have to mention the corresponding vm in order to remove from the vcenter so for the switch information vm host information uh, vm host and network adapter information so you can make use of the corresponding command lines so for network adapter so you want to create a new adapter uh, for the vcenter vms uh, then you can make use of a new uh, network adapter and set network adapter if you want to set some uh, configuration center okay so here uh, i used uh, to connect uh, you know one of the vxs i mean uh, vcenter uh, so once you connected you can able to successfully get all the information you can perform whatever uh, you know you are doing on this uh, vcenter side so once i connected i am going to get uh, a particular vm called test vm so once i uh, you know got the information <coughs> sorry so after that uh, i just use that uh, instance to create a snapshot so hope you heard about snapshot so whenever there's a uh, you know a, a patches or update uh, on the vm side so they will create a snapshot so uh, it will capture the current uh, you know system state so uh, for capturing the snapshot uh, there is no need to go on the vcenter to find the corresponding uh, um, you know virtual machine and uh, right click and do the uh, snapshot and also it will take some time so instead uh, you can use the script uh, to give the corresponding uh, uh, vm and uh, take the snapshot and if you want to give the name for the snapshot you can mention uh, uh, using the uh, you know parameter called name suppose uh, in your v center there are a lot of snapshot will be taken so for you know different different purposes right so at the time uh, it's a it's a uh, you know uh, storage consume i mean the memory consume so if you want to remove the storage size uh, then you have to look uh, all the snapshot so snapshot itself it take it will be uh, you know uh, gb size actually so if you want to uh, reduce the size you have to delete the snapshot on on uh, you know weekly basis or monthly basis so regularly you have to clean up uh, the snapshot so uh, you know it will be handled by vmr team regularly so suppose if you want to automate that task so you can do it using uh, powershell i mean powershell so powershell is a model powershell is a scripting technology so here i just need uh, you know getting the vm uh, from the user so uh, okay so on i just showed the vm name and then uh, we need to get what are the snapshot available on the particular machine uh, particular vm you just use get snapshot hyphen vm for our vm name so the vm we already got, you know get into get got it from the users right so i just passed the vm name so it will provide all the snapshot which is uh, you know available on the machine and we are just storing uh, uh, with the variable so uh, sometime uh, you know some uh, vm having multiple snapshot so at the time uh, if you want to uh, you know uh, delete uh, or remove a specific uh, snapshot then uh, we can use uh, you know for each loop to iterate uh, snaps uh, one by one snapshot one by one <coughs> i used for this loop to uh, find out which snapshot we supposed to delete so if you want to delete all the things so you just mean use uh, you know you know remove snapshot uh, so that's enough but if you want to delete a particular snapshot so here we created the snapshot uh, with the name of before windows path 
updates so i just going to delete this uh, snapshot alone so so for that i am just trying to get the snapshot name um, so using this command let and then i am just verifying uh, so the name it contains uh, before windows update so if it is matches matches with the keyword um, then it will go and delete the uh, vm using uh, remove snapshot command let so if it is not matching it will go to the else command and it will show unable to delete the snapshot any question with this example no question okay, so the next one uh, uh, okay so this is again uh, to connect to the v okay center using the password so instead of passing the credentials we can pass uh, you know username password separately also that's fine so previously we used uh, credentials right uh, here yeah so credentials so instead of credentials we can use pass username and password also separately okay <laughs> okay so if you want to check uh, it vm host this one basically this one uh, this example right so basically it will be useful when it comes to uh, you know extending the hard disk so we are going to extend uh, i mean remove the hard disk actually uh, okay so for that so uh, you have you have to understand the process first so if you want to uh, extend the hard disk uh, then uh, what we supposed to do we have to check the server is um, you know powered on status or powered off status so we have to check the status first so i just used to store the um, you know username the host name uh, the disk name which we supposed to change so all those status i just captured uh, in the variable and then i try to connect uh, the vcenter so after that uh, i'm just checking the host name uh, whether it's available on the vcenter or not uh, using get vm followed by the host name <coughs> host name is again a vm name right so once it is available it will store the values uh, on the vm name so um, you know i'm just checking the power state on the first particular vm the power state uh, is supposed to be not equal to powered off so if it is not equal to powered off it will comes to if condition and it will um, you know get the vm again and it will pass the vm to shut down vm guest so this um, you know vm will be uh, shut down here so the just os guest alone uh, it will be shut down so and then i'm using a, a looping called uh, do until loop so do until is uh, one of the loop uh, type uh, so basically until the vm status is powered off it will run every time so in on the initial it will come uh, without any uh, validation and all so we even uh, when we uh, you know uh, discussing on the looping concept we used uh, do while statement so do while uh, the first uh, time it will execute on the second time only it will validate the conditions so on the first time it will come here and it will check the status uh, of vm uh, so even if it is not uh, you know uh, um, you know uh, powered off uh, then it will show, um, it will pass the message as uh, power vm powered off uh, in progress and then it will wait for five seconds and then it will check the status so if it is powered off or not if it is power off uh, then it will come out of the loop so if it is not powered off then it will go and check the status and then it will wait for five uh, seconds so every time it will check uh, until the status is supposed to be powered off <coughs> okay so now the vm gets powered off then only the uh, loop will be exit and then uh, what we are trying to do so we are just getting the uh, hard disk from the uh, vm uh, so the uh, just we are going to 
can get the uh, appropriate uh, hard disk so some vm contains multiple hard disk uh, information so we have to uh, mention the specific hard disk name disk name so i'm just i'm going to get the uh, just name and also capacity i'm just checking again and the name is supposed to be same and the capacity is supposed to be same size since we have to be uh, careful when uh, comes to disk uh, um, you know extension or removal so here we are going to remove a specific uh, hard disk uh, so at the time we have to uh, to be careful the disk name which we are providing is same as the uh, you know machines name machines available uh, disk name so we are just getting the disk name and also uh, capacity gb i'm just comparing with the uh, input parameters so the input is uh, hard disk 2 and also 56 uh, disk size so if it is same it will come to if condition block and it will show the message like removing the disk after the application installation so basically why we are going to remove the uh, disk uh, it will be uh, you know some disk is uh, you know uh, having the software so we just going to attach the disk in order to install the software so once installation is completed we have to detach i mean uh, remove the disk from the server so that's why we are going to uh, perform this uh, you know script actually so after the software installation we are just going to remove the hard disk so again uh, you know we are getting the same vm and uh, we are uh, finding the hard disk and then i'm just use that uh, object into remove hard disk so i'm just used uh, you know few parameters called uh, delete permanently true sometimes we are doing manually on the vcn it will ask you uh, you know do you want to uh, you know delete permanently or not so you know in the same way we are doing on the uh, script side so we have option uh, delete permanently so we are giving the value as true and confirm false so sometime it will ask right so you know uh, uh, so at the time instead of uh, giving on the front end you just use uh, the parameter on the script level okay so if you are giving false which mean uh, you are not going to uh, delete actually so we have to provide uh, the variables um, you know uh, correct variables actually so once the remove hard disk uh, executed we have to wait for 10 seconds so and, and then uh, we can start the vm using start vm command let so we can delete the uh, hard disk uh, during powered off status only so that's why we are uh, you know powered off the machine first and then we are removing the hard disk and third we are uh, you know starting the machine after the removal and again we are checking whether the server the, uh, the vm is powered on or not so using the loop so every time uh, the loop will be executed until powered on okay, so the else condition is part of this one so whether the given uh, you know disk name and size it's not matches with the server information then it will go to the else spot it will show uh, the message like uh, the binary disk is not present you have to check uh, manually and then we already part of the uh, uh, machine right so uh, so we have to start the machine even if it is uh, you know could not find the exact name so we are just passing uh, using the uh, you know start vm in the else part uh, if we could not be able to find the disk name then we have to uh, start the machine right so we have to start the machine here and we have to wait till until the power down so once everything is completed uh, uh, so we have to close the session so uh, as we discussed before so whenever you are opening a session you have to close it uh, for sure so likewise uh, we started using uh, connect via server on the initial to connect the v center is a login process so likewise if you if the task is completed you have to use uh, disconnect via server uh, with the same uh, v name sorry uh, v center name so if you are using this one uh, the lock off will be happen so the uh, session will be closed so until this session you can do whatever you can able to perform and you uh, recommend so any questions
Yeah, okay. this is part of the uh, you know main task actually this is not the main task so uh, so uh, you know the main task is uh, we have to attach the hard disk uh, on the machine in order to install the softwares the software and all available on the uh, you know hard disk uh, and the multiple softwares on the uh, hard disk so we just attaching the hard disk in order to install the softwares once installation is completed we are just attaching or removing the hard disk that's it so the hard disk will be available or stored on the um, you know v center uh, there are few uh, you know things available on the v center right to store the hard disk and all so um, you know using the other lot of commandlets available is using that commandlet uh, you can perform uh, the uh, you know task which based on the v center and the access host <laughs> So if you are from uh, we send a background or uh, VM background, so you can make use of this one um, for your task, day-to-day -day automation, day-to-day -day operation task. Okay, so on the next one, um, you know, so there is some requirement you will get, uh, you know, uh, for sure. So, uh, so you know, for example, uh, suppose if you want to uh, get the data from the server and you have to um, you know keep the log on to um, you know some repository or some uh, shared this shared uh, you know path so if you want to perform your task uh, every day at, at the same uh, you know 12 pm or 12 am you have to perform the task so regularly if you want to perform the same task so at the time you can do it in uh, uh, you can just create a script and just uh, you know use that script on the scheduler. So what it will happen? So whenever there's a uh, you, you know at the time of uh, you schedule right, so it will be execute the PowerShell command uh, script and it will uh, execute and it will give the result. So instead of doing manually, you just create the script and uh, uh, you know just add the script into task scheduler. So uh, at the time, uh, you know, instead of doing manually, uh, it will automatically execute this uh, PowerShell script uh, at the specified intervals. So if you want to get the, uh, you know, scheduled task uh, from task scheduler, you can able to get uh, using the command let get scheduled task. So if you want to know only the task name and state, you can make use of, uh, you know, select object. <coughs> So if you want to fetch only the running tasks, there are a lot of tasks available, but uh, if you want to fetch only running tasks, you can make use of this one. Okay, so any questions? So why we are going for, yeah. the, uh, you know, task scheduler is uh, if you want to perform a repeated task at the repeated I mean regular interval times you can make use of uh, task scheduler so if you want to get information from task scheduler you can make use of uh, get uh, scheduled task yeah I can understand okay. and uh, Napoleon uh, actually um, I'm something having having in my mind actually uh, I wanted to pull uh, the KBs which are about to install. I mean, which is uh, populated to install. Uh, okay. Uh, and I need to install it. And then um, I will have to um, take existing uh, configuration, like uh, what are the services are running, a, a complete uh, service status. And then what are the task or uh, task for uh, running? And uh, uh, likewise, I'm just uh, taking the uh, configuration details, and then the server will have to take reboot. Okay. Once it has come back again, the same script will have to run, and it will, it has to be uh, compare the uh, uh, configuration changes. So okay. all the services are running or not? Case what what are the changes are installed? Those kind of uh, script I'm trying to build actually. 
but when okay. i am uh, trying to find out the kb which are populated on the, on the server i am not able to get it actually i can get only installed uh, uh, kb okay uh, okay so you tried with the hard fix right get hard fix yeah correct so get hard fix usually will give the installed hard the fix one. yeah correct one minute to put it Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yes, no, Pauline, we can. Yeah. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so what I'm asking is uh, how you are referring uh, the available hard fix manually? Manually by going through the Windows update. Uh, from console uh, control panel control panel right okay yeah okay control panel and then windows update <coughs> windows update i could not find in the turn my machine uh, it's said on the control panel i don't find here it should be oh you are using uh, here i think something was changed it seems okay <clears throat> i am referring to the so 2012 server actually okay here so if you machine. plus uh, yeah Laptop, if, right. if you yeah windows key if you press windows key and then you can put update okay this is uh, you know windows 11 uh, yeah yeah you will have to uh, it will be available definitely in control panel itself but i'm i don't have uh, exact uh, thing but you can okay, go okay. to uh, windows panel then you can create it up windows panel press windows key and then update Windows key and the beta. This one, yeah. Uh, those updates, update. is it? Uh, uh, yeah, correct. Okay, so here you have to go check for update, is it? Yes, correct. Actually, in my so uh, our environment, uh, it will be like um, uh, uh, WSS uh, will be managing the hard fixes. Okay. So, uh, what are the KBs which are up? Yeah, correct. So, what are the KBs which are approved? Okay, okay. That will be publicated to install. Okay. 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 I wanted to list. Then, uh, say for example, no. say for example, uh, yeah. I wanted to uh, pull the list of KBs which are populated to install. That will have to be given. Mm -hmm. That is what I am trying to exp uh, get it. So basically, hard get hard fix will provide only installed uh, yeah, hard fixes. Uh, yeah, so the available hard fixes you may get it from WSUS. So you have to check whether the, uh, how we can um, you know sorry integrate integrate with uh, WSUS from the machine. So okay. we might have a command let uh, other modules. So if it is not, send uh, check is there any API or something. 
so we yeah. we supposed to be have option actually um, even for the scc mandal we have uh, common let so for sure ws us also we might have okay okay so Perfect. using that we can find out um, the available uh, you know kps sure yeah so when it comes to your uh, um, you know the uh, another question so for the validation uh, with uh, you know pre patching and post patching kind uh, kind of you know we're getting some result configuration result uh, you know before the update in the kb and after the update in kb you are again getting the data and you are going to compare those two data right yeah that i can <clears throat> i can make the script but only uh, problem here is okay. that once the uh, server is rebooted again the patch uh, i mean uh, that particular script will have to be continued to run it. so uh, how can i achieve that that is the same script oh okay okay so the uh, reboot and all you update you used on the uh, script itself yes okay uh, again okay. it will have to okay. reboot uh, and it will have to wait for uh, 5 to 10 minutes whatever i am defining hmm. uh, again it hmm. should start next step that is what i am expecting okay 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 uh, okay so you are going to execute the script manually right i uh, guess correct while i am rebooting the server i am going to ex- execute that hmm. Okay, so during the shutdown, what will happen? Uh, the session will be closed. I mean, the PowerShell right. everything will be closed. So if you want to reopen and do something, uh, if you use this uh, scheduled job also, uh, what will happen? Uh, you have to make sure you have to give the intervals actually. Uh, so for example, uh, so you have to give the you have to you know separate the script into two uh, things so one is uh, you know uh, before the reboot so until the reboot you can uh, mention with one uh, script so after the reboot uh, you have to create one more scheduled job so you have to specify with 5 uh, minutes of uh, you know interval okay so that's <clears throat> that's one thing uh, apart from uh, if you have have any orchestration tools it it can be it is possible actually with the auto i mean orchestration tools uh, okay. even uh, devops right so the configuration management tools uh, also is possible uh, when it comes to ansible uh, you know salt stack and all but okay. uh, on the script use scripting uh, we have to make use of scheduled jobs so uh, we have to split uh, you know the script into two parts then only it can be done okay understood okay. <coughs> right okay so um, probably we'll take uh, you know 10 minutes break and then we'll continue with the uh, best practices so um, we have uh, you know best practices today and also uh, we have one more class uh, you know uh, mostly is you know end of the class session actually in class uh, with the uh, your questions clarifications and the interview point of uh, questions uh, and also it might be integration with the other tools um, uh, with the advanced concepts so uh, today we will cover the best practices and next week we will cover the uh, remaining topics so okay this conference will now be recorded All right. Uh, can I hear me right? Yeah, we can. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So now uh, we will discuss uh, more about the best practices uh, in terms of uh, you know scripting, um, coding, and also in general terms. Okay. So. Uh, Okay, so basically, if you are going to start with the PowerShell scripting, so what is uh, you know uh, need is uh, we need a dedicated uh, system. Um, you know, f- so for the dedicated system with uh, admin rights, we need. So then only you can able to uh, uh, you know explore the uh, commandlets and also modules. 
so if you want to install the uh, modules and also if you want to change uh, um, you know group policy and all we need uh, admin rights even something uh, if you want to perform uh, uh, for example if you want to install the winnerm uh, then you need admin rights so for the remoting and all so uh, you know if you if possible we might have multiple uh, machines uh, segregated like uh, development testing vat so if it is possible we can segregate with the different uh, servers um, others uh, if we have only one machine that's also fine but uh, uh, it is recommended to use uh, you know multiple uh, environmental machines so basically if you are having multiple machines in uh, in the environment you can use it for remoting so you can yeah. just configure the winner and uh, you can able to interact with the multiple machines yeah any question okay yeah so uh, and also uh, we have to store all these scripts right so when it comes to git and all git repository and all we can make use of it uh, for storing the uh, you know powershell code so instead of uh, you know storing the script on the local machine so it is recommended to use uh, you know repository svn uh, you know git so it will be helpful uh, not only for storing uh, and also uh, you know version control also available right so we can make use of version controls uh, <clears throat> for the uh, you know code so uh, then only we can know uh, who is uh, you know updated uh, what is the latest version so if you want to refer the uh, initial uh, code and all we can uh, you know find out the code so uh, the next one um, when communicating with the uh, you know user so we can uh, if you want to send an email with the automated uh, you know uh, system so at the time we need an smtp so so if you need smtp um, you know server name and also the credential and all you need so in order to send uh, notification emails so it is recommended to use um, you know separate uh, service account for the automation and also uh, if you want to send um, uh, you know um, status email at the end of the uh, script if you want to uh, generate the data and share it with the customers and all so it is recommended to you use the uh, you know service account and also uh, the smtp is required in order to send the email okay so and also uh, when it comes to the uh, version so powershell version if you have to use the uh, you know stable version the since uh, uh, you know the latest version having the lot of uh, um, command letters and uh, it will be easy to uh, use the command letters for our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, operations so if you are using the older version like uh, uh, windows powershell you know 4 3 5 and all uh, even 5 having the a lot of common lets, but uh, uh, if you are using the latest version, then it will be uh, having a lot of uh, um, advanced common lets. So you have to check which version of uh, PowerShell you are using. So if you are having the lower version, you, uh, you have to uh, you know upgrade the PowerShell version uh, with the latest uh, you know stable to one. So you can download for the powershell uh, from the powershell gallery and uh, you know in the microsoft download page also you you can get just to go and find out uh, the corresponding um, you know dot net framework so if you are installing dot net framework the kb will be downloaded and if you are installing and then um, you know the latest uh, powershell will be updated okay <laughs> Okay. Next one, uh, so it is always uh, recommended to use a uh, help system. So, uh, get help, right? So, get help, say, help is a command, and uh, help is the alias for that uh, uh, command. Let. So, uh, if you are not sure on the command, let uh, if you need more on the command, let uh, uh, syntax information, so it is recommended to use the help system. So, instead of referring uh, on the internet, so even if you are getting the script on the internet. So if you are not sure then the command let what is supposed to be, so you can make yourself, uh, you know, help system for to find out uh, the relevant, uh, you know, command let information. 
so if you need uh, you know full information about the uh, command let use uh, the appropriate uh, parameter so we have lot of parameters right i find full um, you know example detailed um, you know lot of uh, uh, parameters available on the git help command let so make sure uh, you know uh, you want to need um, all the information so like uh, what are the parameters available on the git process so what are the um you know um, data type associated with the parameters so all those all those details you can able to get uh, from the uh, uh, get help of uh, you know hyphen full parameter okay so it is recommended to filter the data um, on the left so you already know um, you know if you are using the command let it will give the entire data so from entire data if you want to um, you know slice the data which you want uh, if you want to filter the data uh, based on your recommend uh, it is recommended to use uh, pipeline uh, however you are going to slice the data for your recommend uh, in the single line of code uh, um, you know it will be useful when it comes to scripting so uh, even um, you know we can achieve it in multiple lines of code to get the data and the process with the validation and all so but uh, it is recommended to use single line uh, statement so it will be easy for processing and also memory management so uh, what i'm telling is uh, if you want to get the stopped process so you can just uh, you have to use get type and uh, service right so it will provide all the services so either you can uh, you know filter the data uh, after fetching the uh, full service uh, with the help of uh, looping and if condition uh, but it will take uh, you know multiple steps of lines of code instead just to use get iphone service uh, followed by pipeline followed by where condition and uh, in the where condition you just apply status is equal to stop right so uh, using single line of code also you can achieve the same so however it is possible to use uh, you know uh, pipeline you can make use of the pipeline with the more uh, you know uh, uh, you know parameters and also commandlets in order to filter the data okay so the best practices of uh, you know partial scripting are coding so it is always to uh, you know mention the full command let names so sometime uh, if someone using the aliases so get service uh, is a command let instead of get service they might use gsv so for get process they might use uh, gps uh, so if you are using uh, the alias so if, if it's system aliases it is fine but it is always recommended to use the full name full command let name so then only if someone uh, going to refer the code so they it will be easy for them to understand and so if you are using uh, if you are you know uh, refreshing the code after a few uh, you know uh, days or few months so it will be easy for you to understand uh, so all, alias uh, we could not able to remember all, uh, you know always so but command lets uh, we can able to find uh, based on the name so it will be the easy uh, naming convention right get type and uh, process so set type and process get type and status i mean service uh, set type and service so stop process stop service so it will be easy to uh, read out the full commandlet so uh, we can use the commandlet instead of aliases so and also uh, when we discussed using uh, you know during the aliases class uh, uh, it is not recommended to use the uh, user defined uh, aliases uh, so we we have option to create the aliases, but it is not recommended to use the aliases it, This is the um, uh, summary actually so let me explain one by one uh, The second one uh, avoid partial or positional parameter names in script so uh, you know if you are using the positional parameters, so uh if it is a user defined uh, then it is not recommended so when we discussed here in the function uh, you know class uh, i told right so uh, we have option to create uh, parameter mandatory parameter positional parameter uh, 
and all but uh, it is not recommended to create positional parameter so sometime what will happen if you are not giving the exact name it will be taken the uh, different parameter so uh, and also someone refer the code uh, they don't know what kind of uh, parameter name we have passed uh, you know we have passed so that's why uh, you know uh, even if the system defined the command letter so uh, you just mention the parameter and then give the parameter value so the third one uh, we have to select the uh, you know edit uh, so uh, when it comes to scripting and the development we need an id uh, basically uh, uh, you know to edit the code and to test and uh, uh, run the code right so uh, in order to uh, you know execute the powershell code we can use uh, uh, you know two things so one is visual uh, studio code and second one is powershell iac so the powershell iac is uh, uh, already uh, comes uh, in windows system so we can make use of powershell iac so otherwise if you need uh, any specific id like visual studio code you can make use of that one also so um, you know initially we discussed about visual studio code right so on the visual studio code once you install go to that uh, you know code and find powershell so you just need to uh, install the plugin the powershell plugin that's it so all the um, you know powershell commands will be shown on the powershell studio code so if you are using notepad and notepad plus plus and all so it uh, you could not able to find the uh, exact issue and also you could not able to run the code uh, so whatever you are uh, so, you know getting in the uh, notepad uh, it, it won't show with the uh, exact issues and also you could not find um, you know which one is a command which one is a value uh, which one is parameter and all so for the highlighted thing and also for uh, execution um, debugging everything you can make use of uh, um, powershell iac yeah so next one um, you know it is always uh, use the uh, right output instead of right i mean uh, it is not uh, always used so if it is secure to use uh, then you can use the right output instead of right host so most of the cases, cases we will use right host only but uh, uh, when it comes to some uh, conditions like uh, so if you need to um, you know print the statement based on the conditions at the time we supposed to use right host but uh, uh, nowadays uh, you know uh, we are just using right host only uh, instead of right output so uh, instead of uh, right host we have to use other writing options like uh, right uh, output right uh, debug right warning uh, right error center so so uh, you know uh, we have a lot of uh, you know command let's say so for the uh, specific purposes we have to make sure to use that uh, command let's okay so uh, next one uh, do not include too many comments so sometime what will happen if you are adding multiple command statement for each and every line so it will be uh, you know uh, if you are seeing the code itself uh, yeah, you know it's um, you will get a lot of uh, green color thing and uh, it is waste of time um, right so wherever it is applicable you can give the comments and uh, the comments uh, you know as we discussed uh, using the fun i mean during the function class it is recommended to give the comments on top of the script so uh, you can just give the all the comments statement on top of the script but uh, you know if it is required to give something you can just mention uh, on the specific logic uh, not on each and every lines of code Okay, so next one. Uh, so use the upload verbs in uh, writing command lines. So for example, uh, if you are creating a variable, so we have to provide the exact uh, you know variable name instead of uh, mentioning uh, A B C X Y Z one two three so or something. So we have to provide the meaningful name. Uh, so and also if you are creating a function so you have to specify the web by for known format so with the meaningful name uh, again so uh, we have to uh, whenever we are creating a variable uh, we are creating a function 
so you should define things so we have to give the uh, um, you know proper naming okay so next one uh, you know so we have to use uh, sim commands instead of wmi commands so we have to we can still use WMI, but uh, you know we can go. I'm gonna go with the practice and make use of uh, sim commands, since it's a new thing. Uh, WMI is a old one, right? So we can make use of sim commandlets. And uh, when you are using the uh, you know file system letter, make sure you are giving the right uh, file extensions. So for example, if you are going with the out file, make sure you are giving .txt or .log. So when it comes to CSV, use export CSV and the file extensions uh, are supposed to be .csv. So uh, when it comes to XLX, uh, you have to use uh, .xlxx. So uh, make sure you are giving the right uh, um, you know, file extensions. And if you are converting the data into HTML, uh, so you can use uh, convert to HTML and also Outlook file name dot html so if you are not using dot html then it will be a different file it will be considered okay so next one format the script for the better understanding so you know if you are formatting so what is the formatting means uh, if you are creating a block either if block uh, for loop block um, you know some block of course so block is nothing but uh, within the uh, curly bracket so if you are using try block catch block so all those uh, you know blocks if you are creating on, on your script make sure to give the space uh, so that you can uh, if uh, you know you uh, uh, closed brackets and open brackets uh, if you are getting an issue so you will identify uh, from the uh, you know formatting so uh, you know give the appropriate spaces and make sure that all the open and closed packets will be uh, on same line and uh, second one um, you know so if you are getting the data make sure the data is uh, um, you know showing on the correct format so sometime uh, if you are getting data lines so you can uh, you make yourself format table uh, iphone wrap in order to expand the data and also uh, if you are exporting the data into file make sure you are getting the data in in the form of uh, you know powershell object or hash table values so you know if it's a notepad you will get all the things whatever you are seeing on the uh, you know screen or command prompt so if you are using excel um, or csv make sure it will be the uh, you know corresponding format uh, i said header and then values okay Right. Uh, use the meta information within the multi-line uh, command. So the thing is, uh, you know, uh, on the top of the script, uh, it is recommended to create multiple line statement with the, uh, you know, description of the script, purpose of the script, uh, um, you know, the code. Uh, I mean, description of the script. For example, uh, initially you are creating the script. You can mention with the date, who is, uh, you know. Uh, uh, writing the code and uh, what's the purpose so likewise you can just update the uh, relevant information on the script so you know if someone going to um, you know add some more features or if you are going to enhance the code at the time you can just add one more statement on top of it uh, line number two uh, and uh, which state you are going to modify uh, the script and what's the purpose you are modifying you just update the uh, you know metadata information about the script this is kind of a documentation actually I'm just skipping uh, what we discussed before uh, okay so and also do not hard code anything on the uh, script <clears throat> so for example if you are hard coding a password uh, so someone will might uh, you know uh, take right so at the time uh, it is recommended to use a vault uh, or the encrypted manner so we discussed about uh, how to uh, store the password and all right you just uh, move the password into uh, 
and get that uh, file and just copy the i mean get the uh, password from the encryption and make sure to use the convert to string or uh, convert to second string uh, command let okay so try to simplify the code using hash table so this one we uh, discussed in the exercise so so we have multiple data we just used uh, used to uh, hash table to combine all the data so under uh, next one um, you know don't create a unnecessary variables so if you are creating a user defined variables so we have to make sure um, you know why uh, you know if it is secured to store the value and uh, if once you used uh, and then uh, you can use remove variable uh, at the end of the script in order to uh, you know remove the variable uh, actually so use the exception handling uh, so the exception handling is try catch black right so whenever it is secured try to use uh, try catch black okay okay so when it comes to function uh, we discussed right so function will always return some value but uh, you know the um, uh, the different uh, programming languages we supposed to use the return statement uh, at the end of the function but here powershell uh, we do not need to use return uh, statement it always return so no need to specify the return actually okay so this one we already discussed uh, we have to use the full command let instead of aliases okay this one uh, whenever it is secured we have to use uh, write host and uh, we can use um, uh, the, the remaining command let like uh, write verbose write uh, warning write error write debugging okay so this is uh, you know the um, recommended uh, you know uh, editor social studio code or powershell isc since since having the shortcut and all um, you know run selection breakpoint for debugging everything so uh, notepad does not have that facilities okay all right uh, this is again uh, we have to use pipelines uh, instead of multi line commands okay so any questions no problem okay okay so um so if you have anything to um, you know uh, refresh uh, uh, any questions or uh, feedback let me know so since we have only one class left uh, i mean next next week uh epilin uh what about the um, uh the notepad that you showed him uh, i mean when teaching classes mm. with the comments that we tried uh, okay. do you have a community yeah. sheet of uh, that notepad uh yes uh, you know all the data you know when of the end of the class i will share it with stan so he will yeah. update all the things on the portal uh, mm -hmm. i think you have access to that portal right a uh, github portal right yeah github portal i can see only the video uh, video uh, okay documents okay i will check with him and share the link okay thank you